Hey everyone, Ham here. Today I thought I'd do a quick follow-up video from my first impressions of the Reverb G2. Uh, there's quite a few people posted comments in my last video, so thanks for that. And some of it gave me some useful information which I thought I'd feed back in another video because someone that's receiving a G2 for the first time might run into some initial problems of setup and some of the things that I've since found out I think will be useful for other sim racers out there. So first of all is this piece of paper that uh, came in the box uh, and I discovered this in the uh, unboxing and at first, for, at first inspection it just looks like basic steps on how to plug this in but it turns out and seen of a few YouTube uh, videos out there that the sequence in which you put this together and take it down is actually quite important so step one is obviously plug in the lead into the headset step two is plug into your computer and step three is plug the power in now I believe this is quite important so that you don't um, short the computer by putting the power sorry short the headset by putting the power into the headset before you've actually plugged it to your into your PC so the optimal way and most reliable way is to follow these steps and similarly for putting it away you should do the steps in reverse so take the power out then take it out of your computer and then if you're gonna store your headset for a long time disconnect the lead from the headset I mean I don't think I'll probably do that because I can't see that making much of a difference but in terms of powering the device on and off, I'd suggest that you always make sure you've got it plugged into your PC first, the headset into the PC first, and then the power second. So yeah, I just thought I'd raise that point. Um, it's something that I did notice and I was doing anyway, but um, it's not totally obvious from this bit of paper. And the fact that it was put inside a box, which was inside another box, uh, makes me wonder if HP sort of forgot about this issue and just wanted to get this information out there at the last minute. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other useful fact that I came across was from someone called Erwin in the comments and they pointed me in the direction of a Reddit post and that's to do with the performance issues or trouble of setting up multiple monitors. I think the particular post, I can't find a link to it in Reddit anymore. The user was having trouble with the OVR overlay uh, that they were using to see chat in the headset and it was having performance issues with that and I think the developer of that app uh, pointed out um, are you using a WR headset do you know there's a potential issue with this and what it was it was linked to this multi-monitor display issue that I'd raised in my first video and it turns out that in order for this headset to support uh, Windows 32 apps and uh, Microsoft Edge uh, Microsoft have basically created these virtual displays so that when you open up the application or any other Win32 app the headset doesn't freeze for a while so it performance smooths out that experience which okay that's great if you're using those but I don't intend to be using Edge uh, for web browsing in the headset so I'd rather not have the performance overhead of having free virtual screens displayed all the time. So the key reason why you'd want to do this register edit is this particular line in this article here it says some customers, especially those with more than one physical monitor, may notice issues with the desktop layout and input handling as a result of this particular virtual monitor feature that's enabled by default. So it appears that Microsoft have known about this issue and I was kind of a bit surprised that no other YouTuber that's had access to the G2 had actually come across this issue having multi-monitors. But there you go. If you're a sim racer and you have uh, multiple monitors attached to your graphics card, turning this off in the registry might be a good option and make your system a bit more stable. So what this article does, it mentions a workaround and the workaround is basically to disable these virtual monitors uh, via registry change. So I'll just explain how to do that in case you're not familiar with uh, RegEdit. Super simple, all you need to do is if you go to your search option under Windows 10 and just type RegEdit you don't even need to get that far. Registry editor. Hit enter. Yep. And then you'll be presented with a bunch of folders here. So we need to go to HK current user software, Microsoft Windows, current version, holographic. So we'll do that now. We'll go to HK current user software, Microsoft. Windows. 
and then we want to go down to Windows, Front Version, and then Holographic. Okay. And then once we've got to Holographic, follow the next step. If the pre-allocate virtual monitors reg D word is not present, create it. So if we look here, we've got uh, three reg D words and there's no pre-allocate one. So we're just gonna add an entry here, new D word, 32 bit. And then we need to call it pre-allocate virtual monitors. And then with it being present now, we can set the value to either true or zero false. So we're gonna set this to false zero because we don't want it. And actually it's created it by default as false. So, and there we actually I saw the monitor jump then, so it may have actually turned it off. Yep, there we go. The multi monitor display caused by Windows Mixed Reality is now gone. Right, on to the third point in this video. Uh, that was the field of view. Uh, I mentioned that I wasn't totally happy with the face gasket that came with the G2, and I felt that it was a little bit too deep for my liking. And that really to get a better feel of view, I would have liked to have been closer, um, a shallower face gasket so I could get close to the lenses. Now I would have liked to have seen an approach like what they've done with the Quest 2 where you basically get the face gasket and then you get an extender for if you wear glasses. So the user at least has a choice rather than it being designed for someone that needs glasses. So um, someone pointed out a link to MRTV. So, I was already familiar with uh, Sebastian and the MRTV channel and he's done some uh, great reviews on different headsets and he's sort of been the champion I'd say for the G2. So one of his latest videos he mentioned the uh, Franken FOV, I think he calls it, this mod. So I checked out the links and I um, ordered the um, Odyssey Samsung Odyssey Plus um, face piece, face cover. So I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to install these now and then feed back to you what I think of them. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, this is the Samsung Odyssey Plus PU foam replacement cover. So this is like a fake, fake leather uh, cover. So we've got the existing face gasket here. And as you can see, it's fairly really close in the dimensions but if you look at the depth it's quite a difference there between these two and the actual depth of the gasket in total so the idea is we're going to attach velcro and we'll be able to velcro this bad boy in place here now obviously one of the main drawbacks, or one big drawback, is you lose these nose slaps which do work really well. But for me, um, for streaming, I actually find it useful to be able to peer through there. So this is actually going to be another bonus for me. Alright, let's get this installed. So what you need? is some double-sided velcro strips so i got this off amazon i think it's like five pounds 99 and it comes with two pieces stuck together so we just need the the spiky loop side because the cover itself has got the soft soft part see grips on there so the plan is to cut out sections of this and stick them strategically on here. Um, obviously we don't want to block the holes so that the face cover can go on. So it's basically 
those there with the screws in. So, in theory, this cover should just fit on. So, let's see how it fits. First attempt, upside down. And that looks pretty good. Okay, this is the final positioning of the Velcro strips that I went for. So I went for one on the edges here, some on the top and bottom, one on the adjuster strap here, and one just before the power cable. Now, let's just double check it. Works with the gasket fine, and it does. So that's handy if uh, my wife wants to try it out because she wears glasses, and I should be able to take it out and put the uh, VR cover mod in for me. All right, let's give it a test. Okay, Ron, first up is the standard face gasket on the G2. So I've got this set to my standard level of comfort. Uh, it's not squashed too tight, but this is a comfy setting. So you're seeing the right eye at the minute, so I'm just going to increase the field of view until uh, I can't see the green line. So looking forward, the right one is starting to disappear. So I can still see them if I look left or right. Okay, straight on, I'd say they're starting to vanish from view. Let's see if I squeeze down, get 90, 92 at best. 94 is pretty much about the limit, I'd say, with the standard face gasket, and it pushed much more harder and compressed than I'd like to play with. So probably 90 is about a comfortable setting with the standard face gasket for me. All right, we'll switch to the VR cover mod next. Okay, got the um, VR cover mod on now. Just adjust the IPD slightly. So I am usually about 64 and it is a bit wider now I guess so I think about 66 is probably a better setting now that my eyes are definitely closer to the lens um, so right okay I can definitely see more so let's crank it up 90 92 still see them 94 still see them 96 still see them 98 okay it's getting to the edges now I push it a bit harder, I can still just about make it, and then 100 it's gone. So I'd say 98 degrees with it fairly tight but still more comfortable than the um, standard faceplate. And 96, quite, very easily see it, and I can even loosen it up. So there you go, that's the difference between the standard and the FOV mod. It's a definite improvement. So to sum up the FOV mod, I'd say this is definitely a great thing to do if you don't need glasses and you want to improve the field of view on the G2. I'd say it seems somewhere between now the Quest 2 and the Index. You know, it's not quite as wide as the Index, but it's getting pretty close with this mod on. Also, I did find it was actually a lot more comfortable than the uh, standard face gasket that comes on the Reverb G2. Now, obviously, you you're losing this uh, nose piece so keep that in mind if you've got a bright environment or you don't like having light coming up through that that nose area but actually as I said before I find this actually quite useful if I'm at my computer I can quickly tilt my head back and see like my mouse and stuff so I actually find that a bonus for me so yeah I'm really impressed with that great mod Okay everyone, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And also a big shout out to Sebastian at MRTV for suggesting this FOV mod. Definitely worthwhile for the $29. And I hope some of the other things I've mentioned in the video help those that have a G2 or are thinking of getting one. All right, until next time, bye for now.